Hey guys, today. what's what is, up? What Thanks for having on? me on. Excited yeah, to be course. here. I've seen your guys' uh, stuff a lot, just all around the internet. So you guys are crushing it too. Yeah, and way to way to stay out of drama. You you kind of stay out of the uh, you kind of stay off the main channel. I do. Um, I am just not about drama at all. I try to avoid it at all costs. But as my page gets bigger, it's kind of unavoidable. Yeah. Like. I have to address it. I have to confront it. I have to talk about it. And, you know, I don't have a problem with it now, but at first it definitely sucked. I've been getting more used to having, like, my personal life online. But yeah. And you've also been, like, hanging out, though, with a lot more people that are in the public eye. That right? is true. That is true. I made travel videos for, like, two and a half years, so I was never really in L.A. And especially when quarantine started, I was, like, forced to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of just, like, had to find new friend groups and start hanging out with people here. And it was actually really cool because I got to connect with people that, yeah. you know, I'd seen for years but I'd never actually met. And we all kind of did the same thing. I, I think I had, like, 1.5 million when I moved to L.A. So I kind of built my following yeah. outside of Los Angeles. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So wait, take it to the take us to the beginning because you grew up in you grew up in Vegas, right? In like, oh, like a lot more conservative family. You talked yes. about that, and then you went into modeling. Like, what's the whole story there? Like, how did the get into travel vlogs? Get into like what you're doing now? You're on. He goes, TV give right me now. the spark notes. I know, give me the spark <laughs> yeah. notes. Um, so basically, yeah, my whole family is LDS. I've talked about that super openly, Mormon, whatever you want to call it. Um, and when I was 18, I kind of decided to step outside of my comfort zone. And um, I was also a D1 athlete. I signed a full ride scholarship to go run track and field hurdles and sprints at Cal State Fullerton. Um, people have seen the Challenger Games, but there's not really any context to that video. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> the thing that Logan Paul held years ago, right? Like the, the yes. influencers like doing the Olympics. It was so random. It was like an influencer yeah. track meet. And yeah, you I got blew, to... You blew all those other girls out of the park, by the way. You it was pretty funny to watch. Like, Everybody's running like this. <laughs> You're so funny though. No, everybody's running like this, and then Charlie's actually fast. Yeah, I think like it was you, and then Summer was like at least like five, six seconds behind you. <laughs> Bro, no one's ever like, let's go have a pickup game of track. Like no one wants to go run. So yeah. when Logan called me and was like, "Yo, we're holding this random track meet," I was like, "This is my time to show off my talents, my skills that no one ever I gets know. to see." Yeah, you're um, not involved in the boxing scene. You're just doing track no, no. scene. Yeah, so random. That's like the one time you'll ever see track be a part of anything. Um, but I always tell him, I'm like, "You should do it again." He's like, "No, I don't think." so <laughs> um it, but when it. i when i ran it i went because each race that you won you uh we won five grand to donate to charity okay so i won like three of the races and got like 15 grand to donate which i was like that's so that's so fun like that's perfect yeah, that's um nice. but yeah the challenger games is quite the time but i ran track and i basically you know that shift from like going on this path uh that i'd been told to go on that my family thought I was going to go on that just your your typical like you know go to school get a job whatever um and I decided to drop out and give away my full ride scholarship and completely change everything that I was doing um I stopped practicing my religion and as a result of that I actually ended up getting kicked out of my house are you serious <laughs> yes I wow. was like halfway through my senior year of high school and I got kicked out of my house and um I lived like an hour and a half away. I, I like was staying at or crashing at a friend's house for a bit until I graduated and I could actually barely get to high school. Like it was like an hour and a half away from where I lived. Um, so I barely graduated. I had straight A's, but I barely graduated because of attendance purposes. Yeah. And then, you know, my family was very uh, hurt at the time from my personal decisions. So I literally at graduation walked by myself, which was the craziest thing ever. High school was not the best oh, time wow. for me, guys. <laughs> Um, I walked by myself for graduation and after that day I was just like I'm yeah. never going back to this ever again like I'm gonna go do my own thing and I had a car that was one thing that I did have so I decided to start doing road trips I was like I I just saw all this like incredible content online I've been taking pictures already doing like some travel stuff but I like really dove into it because I didn't have to be at school anymore so I could just go yeah, yeah. and I started doing road trips I did road trips for like a year in Utah, and that, like, grew my following to, like, 400,000 followers. On Instagram? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, after the road trips, you know, I had different companies hitting me up, like Honda and um, companies like Tentry, and that was actually one, that was, like, my first travel trip that I did. It was the eco-conservation brand, which kind of, like, flung me into that whole side of everything that I do, because I uh, every trip that I did, I was going because I was doing conservation work. Okay. Um, and making videos with tours and boards and different conservation groups in each place that I so went. So these places were like would fly you out, and then you're creating content around why people should come visit, or like at yes. least increasing the awareness for it. Exactly. We so bringing it back a little bit, we grew up with a lot of people like in the LDS community, and like it's interesting because they grew up like more sheltered, and then 
then a, as we went into high school, a lot of them branched away. Like my best friend, they grew up uh, Mormon, but then he also branched away in high school. Like how how did you how did that happen? Like it was just a day you told your parents, or was it something that was building up over the over years in high school? It was over the course of years. I think when I was like, I've always kind of had a chip on my shoulder, just being like a girl in general and especially in that religion it's kind of sexist um and when I was like 12 13 being told oh you're gonna learn how to take care of kids <laughs> yeah. yeah I was just like what like I was that kid in class I was like they would say something and I was in the back always raising my hand questioning everything that they were saying and that wasn't even because of anything anyone had told me it was literally just a feeling that I started to get as I got older uh seminary is like this early morning it's fucking brutal. class seminary what's that it's yeah. like it's so like you notice it uh in in high school like all the all the kids who were Mormon they would all like carpool from the Mormon church over to the high school because oh. you have to get there at like six in the morning yep. and then you go you know you go practice I just thought it was like a carpool setup they do always show up together yeah, yeah. So yeah they always pull up, they always pull up in the <laughs> well it, one of, uh, literally this one time this uh they, these um these these like Mormon kids from high school. They they ran into my car in the parking lot, and like ten kids get out because they all had come from <laughs> seminary. Can't be mean to them. Yeah, they're so like, nice. <laughs> yeah, they just fucking just run right into my car. I'm like, okay, what the fuck? And then like ten people come out. I'm like, oh my god, I'm not ready to deal with this right now. We, we always heard about the 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 dances that would happen because we always got oh invited. God. The Mormon dances with all the all. I the love kids. that this is the topic of conversation oh, yeah, right no, now. I haven't talked about steak dances in yeah. literally years. Oh yeah, oh, it's the most awkward thing in the entire world. They yeah. get like all like the 12, 13. 14 15 year olds and it's yeah. like a dance in a church where you literally can't get closer than like three bibles apart you're like what's your <laughs> favorite colored <laughs> toothbrush <laughs> like you're just asking like the most the random sexual question. the sexual <laughs> tension is just off the charts off the charts it's a bunch of kids who just can't touch each other <laughs> so like it's unreal it's kind of weird when you think about it i'm like <laughs> oh that was kind of weird of them to do that but uh, yeah, seminary was just like the early morning class. Like I woke up an hour before yeah. actual school every single day for four years. And it was just like, uh, this is wrong yeah. and this is wrong. And it just felt weird to me. You know, I was being told like, hey, you're going to get married and have kids. And that's the meaning of life. <laughs> and I, was just I feel like, like mm. it's the people you're surrounded like by, like in high school, middle school that aren't Mormon. I guess like you're more of like introduced Exposed to a new to like lifestyle of the way they're living life. And you kind of break out of that. But, so, but like it's crazy I because I don't, I don't even feel like that was it because I was definitely that kid that was like, if you could not swear around me, like everyone in high school called me prude. It was the worst thing ever. <laughs> but I was just you, like, what you do you mean? No, not at all. Okay. What? I mean, I didn't do anything until I was 18. Because a lot of our friends that were like, ma- like rebelling, I guess, some way in their parents or like, it was a lot more, they were partying. They were going out doing they stuff. They, they, were they, they weren't even partying. They were just doing hard drugs on like their yeah, own time. True. Like they oh. were literally just like, they're, they're just like chill at home and they would be like, okay, like this kid's doing fucking DMT. This, you know, like, I just like <laughs> fucking. Just but that's cr- a huge problem with like the, the culture of the religion is that kids do that stuff anyways and yeah. they just hide it. Wouldn't you rather your kid be honest with you instead mm-hmm. of like uh, the amount of like even girls I know that would like get pregnant and not tell their parents and like something terrible would happen because Bruh. they're trying to hide it. Right. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, you can't have sex before marriage. And then they do some other weird shit. They're like, that doesn't count. You know exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what we're going to talk about <laughs> soaking <laughs> right now. Uh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> What's soaking? What it's, is that? It's, Bro, it's like this whole miscon like everyone. Uh, what is I, it? I don't know, even know if we can talk about it. No, no, we, we got it. Talk yeah, about it. Yeah. It's literally when you just like go in and you don't move yeah. and it doesn't count it's called soaking <laughs> so, <laughs> but so, like marinating like yeah. it's marinating yeah yeah, yeah. they <laughs> call that in some parts a, of the but country. that was like a thing that people would do because they're like oh it doesn't count or like doing fucking like anal and they're like oh yeah. it doesn't count it I'm like is. bro i'm like uh, this is so uh, like just don't oh do God. that yeah, and like what is it like uh, you, if you fuck in the ear then a, it's not it's okay yeah. <laughs> there's a few like abstinence sex moves that like uh, that like can be done there's like there's one called the provo push which pro- it's like <laughs> it's not provo pro- yeah, utah yeah, shout yeah, out yeah, provo yeah, shout so out it's, byu it's, <laughs> it's, it's called the provo push and ultimately it's soaking but then like your friends are in the room and they like move the bed Oh god! So like it's oh you know, manually assisted yeah. the soaking, or there's something else called durfing. Noel, yeah, 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 Noel, yeah, yeah. Noel Miller. It's 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 like dick surfing, but it's like Bro. it's it's fully clothed and like you we. When we, Noel did the Bachelor yeah, of Provo, yeah, well when he, he roasted a, that, yeah, oh. he has a song. He has a song about about durfing now. It's Amazing. fucking hilarious. What about the you said the other day like what the armpit sex or something like that? Yeah, wow. people like you know you can like go on like the knee like back of the knee or armpit. <laughs> mm, the knee pit. <laughs> it, he all, goes. Mm. <laughs> It's all just so funny because it's like, it's clearly like... What are you into over here? (laughs) I'm... I'm, 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 (laughs) (laughs) No, no. I'm I'm into much 
<laughs> he goes, I'm into much weirder things, actually. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, so.